we're gonna hang out in the park for a little while <laughs> i've got i've got willow on my lap he's a good boy he's a very good boy okay so today i wanted to talk about the pros and cons of moving to tasmania so for those of you who aren't familiar i did a video years ago <laughs> about my move uh, from mainland Australia to the island state of Tasmania. So for those of you who are overseas, Tasmania is completely cut off from mainland Australia by a stretch of water called Bass Strait. And Tasmania is a largish island. Um, I would say that to go from north to south, like as far as you can go, from north to south, so almost a diagonal line, would probably take about six hours. So it's not a small place, but um, during COVID, it was very, very isolated. And that was kind of a good thing. So during the whole COVID lockdown, Tasmania, I mean, after the first wave, we, we didn't really have COVID. So it was actually really good and we had a lot of freedom within the state because we didn't have breakouts and we were very strict with our borders. So what happened was you could pretty much freely move within the state. You just couldn't necessarily uh, leave and come back that easily. So for me, like I haven't seen any members of my family for about three years. So that's something to bear in mind is that if you come from somewhere else, if you're coming from mainland Australia, it's not always that easy to just go and visit your family. It's either a very rough boat trip and a very long car drive, or it's quite an expensive plane ticket. What can you see? <laughs> By the way, if you want to follow Willow on social media, he and Ghost, uh, my dog, so this is my fiance's dog and Ghost is my dog, who I have traveled with from the mainland. Um, you can follow them on Bangers and Mash Tasmania on Instagram, and uh, I will link that in the description underneath. You can also follow the channel's Instagram account, which is Tasmanian Wonderlust on Instagram, so I'll link that as well. But of course we know that these guys are the real stars of the show. So yeah, obviously moving here during COVID was pretty different and uh, very difficult. And like I was brand new to the state. So even though I had traveled here before and I had met a few people, I was pretty socially isolated because there weren't that many people nearby that I knew. And, you know, we could, we could travel, um, but it, it wasn't that, easy to do yeah so it took me a while it took me a while to find community and it took me a while to find friends and i really did need to like join organizations essentially work definitely helps with meeting people and uh, having some social connections to the community because that's really important tasmania is a very uh, tight-knit place and you can essentially get a reputation depending on who you hang out with because everybody knows everybody and they all know who the shady characters are and they might not say it out loud but if you associate with the shady characters they will avoid you like the good people will avoid you and I think that's why so many people from interstate end up just hanging out with each other because it's really hard to actually socialize with Tasmanians um, unless you have an in with a decent group of people. And if you, if you unfortunately have uh, made friends with the wrong sort, you will be in so much difficulty like it's not just that other people avoid you it's that the people that you have made friends with are actually predators and they prey upon you and they exploit you in lots of different ways and generally it's financial like they're all 
the shady characters are always looking to make a quick buck. But uh, you can end up in a very dangerous situation, especially as a single woman. And like, I had to flee from a rental because the landlord was hoping to financially exploit me and then also got a bit weird and creepy as well. And like, unfortunately with rentals, you can't even really be that picky because there's so many homeless people who are either like couch surfing or having to like live in a, a one room in a share house with all their kids, like a recent news article. And I have pets, so trying to find a rental with pets is even worse. And, you know, by the grace of God, I have managed to do it. But the first rental that I had when I came back, so I had to flee the first time and I went back to the mainland because that was about all I could do. I had been exploited by an employer and I was also fearful of my landlord and so I quit my job and I like cancelled my lease and I just left and I went back to live with family. So you'll find a lot of employers who are very exploitative especially like small businesses and that sort of thing um, and even big businesses like I have heard from people that I know through work and their family members so they're from interstate that some of the contracts that the bigger companies get people to sign can be really really bad as well and like um, there was one guy who he worked an entire day and didn't get paid for it because it was like overtime but it wasn't enough overtime that it actually warranted payment under his agreement that he had signed and he had apparently looked at the agreement and it was really weirdly worded and complicated but that was what it meant it meant that if you did um, a certain amount of overtime you would get paid and if you didn't reach that quota of hours then you didn't get paid so of course why would they give you the amount of overtime that they then have to pay you they would always keep it just under so that you do like you know six hours of work that you don't get paid for and just really really shady things like that and I've heard of employers who like their employees have left because of things like sexual harassment and they have intimidated their employees with all sorts of threats that are not legal and they are covering up a crime and they get away with it because they're very important people in the community they're very rich people and they've got very old family names in Tasmania so no one is willing to hold them accountable everyone's afraid of these people and if you say anything they will come after you and they will try to ruin you and they will threaten you if uh, if anyone says anything so some of the things that I know about different employers in this place are mind-boggling and yeah when, when people say that Tasmania has deep-seated corruption that's that's not an understatement you will generally be fine if you work for you know organizations like the state government or things like that but you know how how common are those jobs and even then like if you look at the healthcare system in Tasmania it's really rough like they just don't have the infrastructure they just don't have the population to to fund things that people need and so I know families that have had to essentially move to Melbourne because their children need treatment and there are a lot of situations where people have to get airlifted to Melbourne because that is the only place where they can get surgery or certain treatments for different really complicated and rare and life-threatening diseases 
and if it's a small kid like their whole family has to fly or take the boat you know every couple of months it's hugely expensive i have donated to multiple gofundme accounts for people who need hospital stays in melbourne and it sucks that that kind of thing just isn't even it's not even covered by any kind of insurance or any kind of um, government policy so again being on an isolated little island has its drawbacks so i was i went off on a tangent but i was going to tell you about a rental that i had at one point which didn't have walls <laughs> so here are some photos of the rental that i lived in uh, they were in the middle of renovating when i needed a rental and they kind of gave me a discount for it uh, and i was allowed to have pets so there were a lot of upsides to it and it's, it was in a very convenient spot like location wise absolutely astounding but <laughs> my very first winter back in tasmania after i had escaped and returned with a job that was actually no that job was <laughs> was also terrible <laughs> so i think i had like three different um very bad jobs in tasmania and i feel like that's a very common occurrence because it's like you get here and it, it's so hard to get a rental because they're very thin on the ground and there are a lot of people wanting them and the only people that really get a look in are the people who have good jobs so how do you get a good job well you can't unless you live here <laughs> so it's like this constant catch-22 going around in circles where you can't get a rental because you can't get a good job and you can't get a good job because you can't get a rental and you can't get a rental because you can't get a good job and you can't get a good job because you don't have a rental so sometimes you can get a decent enough job from the mainland but even even then uh like they were they were saying oh if you can't give us a local address then we're not going to offer you the job and it's like but if you if you don't offer me the job then how can i tell someone to give me a rental and there are a lot of situations where like you will apply for jobs and you won't even get an interview unless the the people kind of know you or know some of the people on your uh referee list so one of the things that i did that was advantageous to me was volunteering if you volunteer for a community organization or a government organization and there are lots of volunteering opportunities because there are lots of places that need labor and they won't pay for it or they can't pay for it so you you can work full-time as a volunteer uh, without getting paid but the thing is it gives you references it gives you things that you can put on your resume and say I have been here since this time these people know who I am these people will vouch for me and that is pretty much one of the main ways to actually get in and I feel like I really need to apologize for all the truck noise I don't know how to get away from it it's just everywhere <laughs> and don't even get me started on the trains it's one of the trains <laughs> they're really loud like for some reason they have these beautiful little towns like penguin with a freaking freight train railway line running right through the middle of it okay so that's a lot of negative stuff but what about the positives well obviously i'm still here so there must be some positives right my number one draw card for moving to tasmania quite frankly was the climate i love the cold i have not regretted this decision one second in my life just because of the weather one thing i am kind of annoyed about is that like i still haven't seen snow i've seen little bits of snow i've seen it snowing but i haven't seen it like accumulate on the ground and that for me is like a major major goal that is a big bucket list 
thing that I want to take off. And I kind of would like to take Ghost to the snow because he's a snow dog. So I absolutely love the weather here. I love the seasons. I am really enjoying autumn. It's one of my favorite times of year. I actually look forward to summer. I used to dread summer so much when I lived in Queensland. It was like the most horrific time of year for me and I hated it with a passion. It lasted so long. I think like summer would last from September to probably like now, like April, May kind of time frame. And then you would get sort of like a, a bit of a autumny, springy thing at either end and you would have like a few weeks of winter and that was it. Whereas here, it's like we, we are starting to feel the effects of winter, although it's still really pleasant. Like I'm not wearing a jacket, it's the shade and it has been quite cold this last week, but I'm not wearing a jacket. I'm just wearing like one shirt and a jumper. So you know it's not cold unless you're wearing like two shirts, a jumper and a jacket and gloves and a beanie and boots and stuff. Oh, and I have a new set of boots ready for winter. I am so keen. I've got Merry People gum boots. So these were my Christmas present from my fiance. Thank you, Tom. And they are the coolest thing on the planet. So yeah, for some people, the weather might be a bit of a turnoff, but like, you, you know it's a cold place. Like, why would you come here if you're not interested in the cold? Another thing that I absolutely love about Tasmania, and I haven't done it enough lately, as you can probably tell from the tardiness of my posts, is hiking because the landscape is fantastic nature is everywhere it's beautiful it's there's so much variety here like it's a small state it's a small island but there's so many different kind of like pockets of climate and very different terrains around the state and there's so much to see the beaches are amazing it's often too cold to swim but they are some of the most beautiful beaches in the whole of Australia and I can say that because I have lived in multiple states around Australia so I'm originally from Western Australia I lived in South Australia I've lived in Victoria I lived in Queensland I have traveled to New South Wales I haven't traveled to the Northern Territory but I'm not real keen to because they got crocodiles so that would be a deterrent for swimming at the beaches there but yeah, they have absolutely fantastic beaches here in Tasmania. They've got like white sand beaches and clear blue waters and those lichen covered rocks that look orange and so many different beautiful natural formations. So yeah, I am definitely planning on getting back out there a lot more once I finish uni and I'm going to take you guys along with me. So do stay tuned and subscribe if you're interested in that. Also let me know in the comments if you're interested in more videos on like, you know, personal insight about what it's like to live in Tasmania because, I don't know, maybe people are interested. One big reason to not stay in Tasmania is how expensive it is now, but that was originally something that uh, was part of my reasoning for moving here was that it used to be cheap now very expensive. There are still some cheap places out there but you have to live in remote, remote places and I mean like places where you you pretty much can't work. If you have a job where you can work from home and you're like internet based then you could probably do it but my work is all customer based so I can't. One final draw to Tasmania for me is actually getting community. It was something that was sorely lacking in the city. So I feel like relationships are probably the most important thing in life. And I know that I listed like the climate and <laughs> the scenery as my first two pluses, but 
like in, in all seriousness, relationships are the thing that broke Tasmania for me before and relationships are the thing that make Tasmania for me now. Whether it's work relationships or community relationships or family relationships or romantic relationships, and in my situation, uh, I have actually found the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with, which is amazing. I think I had probably given up on that dream. And he comes with bonuses like a puppy. So even though I haven't seen my family in ages and I am absolutely thousands of kilometers away from everyone that I have ever known in my entire life, I don't feel lonely and I don't feel isolated. I feel very content and I feel very, I don't know, just like life is good. And even though a lot of people play nice publicly with the snakes in the grass, it doesn't mean that they don't know that they're there. And it doesn't mean that you can't find a group of people who won't like do all of those really shady things. So I have good employment, I have good housing, I have good friends, I have the love of my life, I have puppies, I have kitties, I have ratties. Well actually he has rats, but I like rats, so they're also mine now. And we can just live a very calm, happy, contented life here. So for the first time in a long time, it feels like I have a future and I have something to hope for. And that is essentially why I left Queensland is because I didn't feel like I had a future there and I didn't have anything really to hope for. And it wasn't a place that inspired me. It wasn't a climate that I thrived in. I thrive in the cold and I thrive in small communities and I hate cities and I'm so that's another plus side is traffic even though there's a ton of trucks right behind me uh, <laughs> just kind of negating everything that I'm saying but the the traffic is so much less like my daily commute to work isn't an absolute nightmare I wouldn't say that the like back roads of Tasmania are great because <laughs> anything to do with infrastructure in Tasmania is not great but if you can get to the situation where you both live and work in the same town or the same small city, then life is so much easier than it is in capital cities on the mainland. For those of you who care about shopping, the shopping's not great. Like you, you will have to travel if you want something really decent. Like I did today. I travel because there's a spotlight in Bernie. But if you're not someone who's like particularly worried about materialist type stuff, then it's fine. You can get everything you need here and it's not that much more expensive. So that is my two cents on what it has been like after a few years having moved to Tasmania. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if there is anything else that you want me to talk about, about what it's like here. And yeah. Take care out there. God bless. See you next time.